away from me. Here, take this. There's dark circles under your eyes are getting out of hand. This potion should help, at least for a night. Thanks, Daniel. These nightmares are really getting to me. Well, classes have been pretty grim ever since the start of the fourth year. Spider legs, gnome saliva, splattering liquids. To be honest, every time we have defense against the dark arts right before dinner, even I... Unless shepherd's pie is on the menu. Uh, you caught me. There you are. Come on. Professor Brindlemore doesn't like it when we're late, and it's getting awfully close. Right. Another defense against the dark arts class. Do we even need this much defense in the first place? Can't believe we have to take it until our sixth year. All this negativity. What's wrong with the two of you? Daniel says he can't enjoy dinner after these stomach-churning classes. Well, it's not just me. You're having all these nightmares, and it's making Madame Pinch mad. I think I've got some old fainting fancies stuck in my robe pocket. We deserve a break, and I don't mind sharing with a friend. Pocket lint sweets? I'd rather not. A swig of my draught of living death will do the trick. I can't believe the two of you are seriously considering this. It's not that bad. Now, come on. Professor Brindlemore said she had something special for us today. to see what the two of you meant. Now, who's up for dinner? Not me. Churning stomach. The two of you go. Sorry, me neither. I can barely keep my eyes open. Uh, I was deep in the forbidden forest, staring down a full-sized forest troll. It swung a tree trunk at me, narrowly missing my head. Without flinching, I drew my wand and blasted it back into the cave it crawled out of. What an exhilarating adventure. Please, do tell us more. I saw the wiggling big toe on its stinking right foot. Swished my wand and BAM! The beast cried the loudest yelp I've ever heard in my life! Right foot, you say? Are you sure it's not the left foot? I don't know what you're insinuating, mate. Were you there? I might have hit both its big toes with the brilliant spell I was casting. Do enlighten us, please. What spell was it exactly? Something powerful enough to pierce the skin on not one, but both big toes of a troll. You do know troll skin is exceptionally resilient to magic, don't you? Uh, of course I do. It's the, um... Did the rest of you get it? No? Please repeat it for all of us! I don't think you're going to get a spell out of Fisher today. He's just making it up. Are you calling me a liar? She's saying you shouldn't be telling these misleading tales. Trolls are extremely dangerous, and we both know you've never been that deep in the Forbidden Forest, let alone single-handedly defeated a troll. And I suppose you fancy yourself a big, brave hero, don't you? I didn't say... <sighs> hmm. See? Already more of a hero than you'll ever be, Fisher. Oh, really? Then prove it. I challenge you to a test of courage. Tonight. I wouldn't necessarily call that a test, Fisher. I've been to the forest, well, quite a few times. Let's see if you can do it faster than me, then. Bet's on. Ah. Huh? 
Hey there. Have you really been to the Forbidden Forest quite a few times? Uh, I don't see how that's a stranger's business. Oops, totally skipped the introductions. I'm Wenxi, a fifth year in Slytherin. Why would a fifth year be in our class? Let's just say Professor Brindlemore thinks I need a bit of extra review if I'm ever going to pass my OWLs. But enough of the boring stuff. What about that trip to the Forbidden Forest tonight? An enthralling quest for the exquisite unicorn hair. Can I come with? I don't know what you're planning here, Wenxi, but I'm not going. You're not? I just said what I said to get Fisher off my back, Daniel. I'm really planning on making good use of that potion of dreamless sleep you gave me. I'd choose a good night's sleep over troll toes any day. you'd be fast asleep right now. I was woken up by a house elf who brought a note from Colby. Wonder how he got the house elf to do it. Wow, huh? Ah, <sighs> typical Fisher Frey. I suppose we're out here for the same reasons. Someone needs to be there to keep an eye out in case he gets into trouble. Now that we know that the Dreamless Sleep Potion works, I can gather more ingredients for it while we're there. Thanks, Daniel. Before we go, though... You're invisible! I'm invisible! We're invisible! Well, more like transparent, but still very impressive. When did you practice this spell? Someone once cast it on me to... Um, maybe we can save the story for later? Let's find Fisher. What do we do? We should be able to sneak by Fish so long as we're quiet and don't stay out in the open too long. Just remember he'll be able to see us if we get too close or move too quickly, so be careful. Mrs. Norris won't be so easily fooled. She's going to alert Filch and blow our cover if she keeps meowing like that. Let's split up. We'll have a better chance of losing her that way. We can all meet back up outside the Forbidden Forest. going to think I chickened out. Even the disillusionment charm's worn off. Sounds like someone's coming. I'd better hide. Could Mrs. Norris have caught up to me again? No, those sound like footsteps. Filch? A cloaked figure skulking around the castle in the middle of the night? Well, that's not suspicious at all, is it? Smells like danger. Really? I thought it was a rotting pumpkin.
Is that... frost? When did it get so cold? Ivy? Daniel, is that you? It's no use. My attacks don't face it at all. Signal for help. You were attacked by a dark creature called a Dementor. How are you feeling? Weak, shivery and cold. Like I've got a bad bout of flu. And hollow. Like I might never smile again. Unfortunate, but sadly not surprising. Dementors feed off hope and happiness, leaving nothing but despair and bad memories behind. Now that they've awoken and are predicted to make a full recovery... <sighs> what were you thinking, breaking curfew to sneak into the Forbidden Forest? You could have died! One of you very nearly did. With all due respect, Professor, I think it's safe to say, by the terrified looks on their faces, that they get the message. Harry Potter? What are you doing here? Harry and his Patronus saved your life! I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, that's all. You are lucky Mr. Potter was on assignment nearby and saw your vermilious charm. When he arrived, he feared you were only minutes away from the kiss. The kiss? The Dementor's kiss. That's what it's called when a Dementor sucks out a person's soul. Your body lives, but you become an empty shell. It's said to be a fate worse than death. That's exactly what makes your little excursion to the Forbidden Forest such a serious transgression. I'm afraid I must... Not to interrupt, Professor, but might I have a moment to speak with them privately? I'm needed back in Hogsmeade. Of course. But this discussion, specifically regarding your punishment, is not over, you three. Did you happen to notice anything unusual before the Dementor attacked? Unusual? Did you see or hear anyone else in the forest? Or perhaps notice anything that didn't belong? I don't think so. But my memory's a bit fuzzy. That's understandable. However... Oh! Glad to see you're still looking out for us, Madam Pomfrey. I'll be taking my leave. I think I'm doing okay now, actually. Fine enough for a walk, in fact. Are you sure? I can't imagine recovering from a Dementor attack without some smooth, bittersweet chocolate. Actually, I know right where you should be. Come with me.
I figured they'd never run out of chocolate and honey dukes. My treat. I know how dreadful it must be feeling now. I'll be right back. It's a bit too crowded in there for someone who ought to be resting in bed. What you've done. What's wrong? Probably nothing, just sleep deprived. First encounters with dementors are always the most difficult, but it will get better. Wow, it really works. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Feels warm inside, doesn't it? It helped me after my first Dementor encounter, too. I just realized I never properly thanked you. For saving me from the Dementor and, um, its kiss. <laughs> well, that Vermilius charm you fired was quite impressive. I couldn't have found you without it. <gasps> Curious? Both your friends were apprehended before they could leave the castle. It would seem that someone else was in the forest that night. Possibly in danger, too. Mr. Potter, if I may, I saw an ethereal glowing creature before I passed out in the forest. That was your Patronus, right? Yes, mine is a stag. Patronuses can take the form of various creatures, depending on the witch or wizard. I know you're extremely busy, but could you maybe teach me how to do it? Sorry, I realize it's too much to ask. Please forget that I mentioned it. Oh no, don't apologize. I'd be happy to teach you. The Patronus charm is challenging for sure, but very useful. Probably not today though. But sooner than you might think. Really? Thank you, that's brilliant. In the meantime, I'd suggest going to the library for a bit of light reading. Wait, that sounds like something my friend Hermione Granger would say. You know her, right? Good old Hogsmeade. Always bustling with life and laugh. I'll never forget my first trip to Hogsmeade. Quite the experience it was. I snuck out of Hogwarts under my invisibility cloak. Popped right out of the cellar of Honeydukes. I remember distinctly all the sweets we devoured, and the stomach ache that followed. Those were the times. It's been a while since I visited Hogsmeade. Would you like to come along? Good old Hogsmeade. Always bustling with life and laughter. I'll never forget my first trip to Hogsmeade. Quite the experience it was. Arriving with my fellow students in my third year. I remember distinctly what I saw, how I felt. Those were the times. And now, they will pay.